Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Philip said, show us the Father, show us who God is and we will be satisfied. He's not alone. Philip speaks for all of us. If you could sum up all human longing in one sentence, I think that might be it. Show us who God is. Because there's a lot packed into that one request, isn't there? Because I would guess that that's why most of you are here at church today, especially on this holiday weekend with Mother's Day. It's here to find out who God is. Because it's not as if you didn't have other options on this beautifully sunny morning going over pancakes, whatever it is people do on Mother's Day. You come hungry or merely curious with great need or simply out of habit or, or both. But the unspoken words on your lips as you gather here for worship are, show us who God is. And we all have our own expectations of what that looks like. We have a sense for because we bring the stuff of our lives to this place where we trust that God will speak and where we will see God revealed in a way that we can see. At least that's the hope. Show us who God is. What are you drawing? A teacher leans over and asks a little girl who's drawing a picture at school one day. Well, I'm drawing God, the little girl responds. The teacher laughed and said, no one knows what God looks like. Well, they will when I get finished with this drawing, said the little girl. Apparently that's a true story. Because everyone has their vision of what God is like. So what do you think God looks like? If you could draw a picture of God, what would that picture be? Would you draw a person? An old man, you've seen the one, bearded, octogenarian, ripped abs, thunderbolt in hand, scowling on a cloud? Or if, what about on Mother's Day today? Would you draw a woman giving birth? Since God is the God of creation, giving life to the universe, bringing into being all that exists, would you draw a nature scene? with radiant sunbeams shining luminously through soaring trees with just the right amount of mixture of light and dark to signify presence and absence, intimacy and mystery? Would you draw a self-portrait, believing that since we are all created in God's image, God looks just like every one of us? Would you draw a group scene since you believe that God is found in each other, in a community joined together in common belief, would you draw Jesus? Or at least what you think Jesus would look like because you know that Jesus is the fullest expression of God. If you listen closely to today's Bible reading, that's what Jesus in fact does. That's the picture Jesus paints for Philip as an answer to his questions. Because Philip seems to understand in his skin that Jesus can show him who God is more than anyone else can. His question has a lot of assumptions built into it. And he is asking more than just a quick and dirty explanation of who God is and how God works. Philip's question, show us the Father, show us who God is, runs to the heart of heaven and earth and plunges deeply into where human beings find themselves. Show us the Father, show us who God is, Philip demands. Show us the grandeur of celestial power and the majesty of divine love. Show us God Almighty in splendor and magnificence. Show us ultimate cosmic strength unleashed. Show us God's brilliant light in a dark and sinful world. Show us what life and existence are all about. Show us that our mortal lives are connected somehow to eternal life. Show us God's vision of the future where justice and mercy, peace and love reign over us so that the world today won't seem so scary. Show us that God really cares about us. Show us that God is somehow active in this world and actually does something 
in our lives. Show us goodness in a world that seems like it's overrun with evil. Show us life everlasting in a world consumed by death. Show us wisdom in a world overflowing with mere information. Show us compassion in a world overwhelmed with self-centeredness. Show us wealth in a world weighed down by mere riches and show us something more than what we can see in our daily lives. Isn't that really what Philip was asking? Isn't that maybe what you come here asking from Jesus? Show us who God is. Show us the Father. But Jesus can't believe his ears. Are you really asking me that? He asked. You've been with me all this time. You still haven't figured this out. If you want to know who God is, just look at me. If you're wondering what God is all about, just look at what I do. If you're trying to hear God's voice, just listen to what I say. God is in me and I am in God. But Philip wasn't asking anything from Jesus that everyone else wasn't wondering about, both back then and even now. It was his voice that was speaking, but it was our words coming out of Philip's mouth. And Jesus' answer seems like it's more the beginning of a reply than a definite answer. God is in Jesus and Jesus is in God. Yes, Christians believe that, yet Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we have seen God. That's the grand claim of the gospel. But that doesn't really fully satisfy, does it? It doesn't totally answer the question. We are told that we have a God who loved us so much that God did not want to remain distant and unapproachable. So Philip says, if that's true, show us. If you want to know who God is, Jesus responds, just look at me because I am the way I am the truth, and I am the life. If you want to get to God, you get to God through me. It's a very familiar saying from the Bible for a lot of us. But to some, this passage seems like hopelessly exclusive. It's like he's drawing new boundaries, creating needless divisions. At least that's the way this passage has been traditionally read. If you don't get to God through Jesus, then you better stock up on the aloe vera because where you're headed is going to be pretty hot. To a lot of people, this sounds like a threat rather than good news. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. No other religions need apply, so come to Jesus or suffer the consequences. But for Jesus' listeners, this was anything but exclusive. This was not a threat. This was liberation. He was drawing people in. He was expanding the circle, reaching out to those who felt abandoned by God because they had no access to official religion. They they were searching for a love they could grasp from a God who seemed like a stranger. Because everywhere they turned, they hit a religious roadblock when they went seeking after God. It was like the game was rigged to to keep them as far away from God as possible. And they were right. The game was rigged against them. Sacrifices they couldn't afford. Religious teachings that were irrelevant or even dangerous to their daily lives. The feeling that they were there for the institution rather than the institution being there for them. Prayers that seemed to go nowhere. Cries for help that evaporated once they left their mouths. Worship that dried up in the desert sun when they were longing for water to refresh their scorched spirits. Teachings that left them more lost than when they began. And preaching that made them feel worse about themselves than when they walked in. The more they sought after God, the further God seemed away to them. Then along came Jesus. And he said, if you're feeling lost, like every road leads nowhere, where street signs keep pointing you in the wrong direction, where the highway takes you further and further away from where you need to be, and God seems like just a distant memory, then follow me. I am the way. 
If you are looking for truth in this muddled world where nothing seems fixed, where there's so many competing facts demanding your attention, where the world's angriest voices are so loud that that's all that you hear, where misinformation fills your news feed, where trolls have overtaken any meaningful discussion, where accusations of fake news appear on your TV and allegations of alternative facts are heard from talking heads and you just don't know who to believe anymore, Just look to me. I am the truth. If you're looking for life when there's so much death around you, if you're looking for abundance amidst so much scarcity, if you're looking for beauty among so much ugliness, if you're looking for signs of vitality emerging from the destructive chaos that humanity is causing, if you're looking for a fresh start, a new direction, a clean break, if you're looking to explore new worlds that you didn't know existed and to seize opportunities that you didn't know were available to you, then follow me. I am the life. I will take you to God. But what they didn't know, but perhaps suspected, was that Jesus was using words differently than what they were used to. Yes, Jesus was the way, but Jesus' way is the cross, the way of sacrifice born from love. And the truth that Jesus proclaimed is the God who walks among us, who speaks only of wisdom, whose presence demands that we see ourselves and our place in the world through the eyes of mercy and forgiveness. And the life that Jesus shows us is one that wraps a towel around his waist and kneels down to wash his disciples' feet. That's the way, the truth, and the life three different ways of singing the same thing. So if you want to see God, just look around and see where Jesus is and what God is doing. Because God is and Jesus is in places you may aren't, probably aren't looking, in areas you probably not suspect. God is at the hospital bed holding someone's hand and saying a gentle prayer. God is with the confirmand and the faith mentor, sitting down and talking about life, sharing each other, growing in faith together. God is at the funeral home, weeping, perhaps saying comforting words, just staying silent, but whose being there are just words enough. God is in the voice of protest against injustice. God is in the voice, the words of forgiveness that bring people back together. God is in the hand that reaches out in friendship. God is teaching Power Zone, helping our children grow in faith. God is setting up coffee in the foyer to enhance our fellowship. God is making dinner at In From The Cold. God is in that caring phone call, the visit to the nursing home, the care of our refugee family, the canned goods for the food bank. God is where life and love are given away freely. God is where mercy and grace are received with thankfulness. God is where new possibilities emerge from hopelessness and discouragement. God is where promises of a new and better tomorrow are met with hope and with trust. God is where the assurances of eternal life are received in faith. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, Jesus says. I will take you to God. And may this be so among us. Amen.